Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. <laughs> Whoa, okay. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Lyka Show this Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Niles on the Tom Lyka Show. Hello. 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 Hello, is this Tom? You want to talk to Tom? Yeah, this is Niles. All right, Niles, hold on, please. Sure. The Tom Like His Show. 1 800 5 800 Tom. We got big brass balls here. Niles. Tom Like His Show. Hello. Yeah, hey, can you hear me? What? Can you hear me? Could you speak up, please? I may have a bad connection. Can you hear me now? I think you got to talk a little louder, pal. I'm all I'm all the way up, man. I'm yelling into the phone. Love your show. Listen all the time. Can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> they give up easily. I don't get it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Paul on the Tom like his show. Hello. Yeah, I was just uh, wondering, uh, how did the uh, movie production go at your house? Well, it uh, hasn't happened yet, uh, but I uh, did have a meeting with my city councilman, in right in front of my house, as a matter of fact. And the two people representing the or the the private corporation, the nonprofit corporation that uh, that uh, gets the city of L.A. off the hook for issuing film permits, and I met with a representative of the LAPD. And, uh, of course, I told you the Greased Fist was coming, and uh, they're going to be filming uh, on that uh, location, whether I like it or not, I was told, essentially, in a very nice way, because they feel my pain and they understand my concern. But they are, they say, trying to balance the interests of the residents with the interests of keeping the film industry in Los Angeles, and we all want to keep those cameras rolling. So... They are going to a station, they say, two police officers, a fire marshal, and uh, they're going to uh, monitor their behavior, and they claim they will pull a permit the minute they violate the terms of the permit, which, of course, we'll see if that's true. I will say that if in any way they interfere with the quality of life at my home, I'm going to be stuccoing the south side of my house, and that's going to begin with some sandblasting. Right about the time they're filming. Well, good luck with that, and can you take me out TiVo style? I can take you out TiVo style. Here you go, Paul. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jason on the Tom Likas like Show. What's up, Paul, man? I love you. Thank you. By the way, I should say before Jason says a word that Jason is an anonymous caller. I don't even know if his name is Jason. That's I, right. I don't know who he is. And people who call radio programs frequently make claims about people that they don't really know, or maybe they do. Uh -huh. uh, they say things that may be true, may not be true. And uh, I just want people to know that when someone calls a talk show, it is not a fact, not a fact of life. Uh, you have to take them with a grain of salt. So what this person's about to say, it might or might not be true. And all I can do is let him say what he has to say, and then you can decide whether you believe it. Jason, go ahead. Well, I heard that last clip, that, that Kobe that Kobe clip, and that kind of hit home with me because I went to high school with her. And uh, Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, uh, she was always making trouble with me and my friends. 
every every weekend. We uh, she got really drunk one weekend and ended up over at my buddy's house and we were hanging out playing PlayStation. This was where in Eagle, Eagle, Colorado. Uh huh. And uh, she showed up at the house with one of her friends and was just so wasted she couldn't even walk. And we brought them in, gave her some water, tried to take care of her, and took her home and, you know, left her on the front porch because her parents were kind of scary. And uh, she said that we were, we got her drunk and tried to take advantage of her. And so we had to fight through that. And then another night, we were all out just kind of hanging out and our high school got vandalized that night and she went and we we weren't there we were at my friend's house that night and his mom vouched for us and she told the principal that it was us that did it and so we got sat down in the principal's office and they told us we were we didn't get to walk at graduation because she accused us of doing it so, all right, well, again, this is uh, your claim, and we can't verify it. We don't know if it's true, but let me ask you this opinion from you. Based on what you say is your experience with this person, uh, do you think, what do you think of her claims about Kobe Bryant? Oh, she'd sleep with anybody that was famous. Not only that, I'm asking uh, about the claim that he raped her. Right, no, I think that if, if he was there in the hotel, she'd jump his bones. Willingly. So you're saying you didn't believe it? No, absolutely not. Not in the not not in the slightest sense that he raped her. All right. Thank really? you. Thank you for that. As I said, anybody can call a radio show and claim anything. Is that true? Who knows? Just take it with a grain of salt. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, I was just calling the one way your views are on uh, UFC and like mixed martial arts. I love it. Did you see that? This is an amazing story. Did you see that CBS is going to have mixed martial arts on Saturday night? CBS. Isn't Kimbo Slice their headliner? Yes. CBS. I'm I'm kind of disappointed that uh, the UFC didn't take up on that. They're a better organization. Well, it would be my guess, based on the story I read in the paper about this today, that they were not made a substantial cash offer. Yeah. And so the other organization uh, took the offer. Uh, but, uh, I mean, can you imagine how far mixed martial arts have come, that, that they're going to be on network television? I, that's insane. Yeah. I love it, though. It, it's great. It's yeah. so much better than boxing. No, I watched the last uh, Chuck Liddell pay-per-view, and it was spectacular. It was everything and more. And uh, he oh, yeah. lost, by the way, but it was a great fight to watch. Uh, all right, thanks, Tom. Can you blow me up? Here you go, Brian. one 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Daryl on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Daryl. How are you doing, buddy? Doing great. The reason I called was, um, I don't know, I'm from Ventura County, and I don't know if you heard about it, I'm sure you did, about the uh, 14-year-old boy who shot the other kid in school. Yes. And he's now being tried as an adult. And I don't know if you've heard any of the backstory, but, you know, since I'm local, I hear things. And I just wanted to know your opinion on, you know, what you thought about it, about him being tried as an adult and, like, the whole situation in general. My opinion is that people who commit adult crimes should be punished as adults. Okay. And, I mean, do you think that... That means way... rape and murder. Yeah. Yes, you should be tried as an adult, no doubt. Well, do you think that the situation should have been handled differently prior to letting it get this far? Because could you imagine being a 14-year-old boy and having another boy in school with you and telling the whole school that he is gay and that he loves you and you now, i don't care what he said that doesn't excuse killing anyone no i agree that it doesn't justify to kill anybody but i, I guess I'm, schools well, I have never never understand. ever dealt with the bullying issue and the slander issue adequately uh as a kid i was a victim of a bully in the eighth grade every day of that school year every single day yeah every day and that was what 40 years ago yeah. Okay. It's been this way forever. 
schools, you know, they're all worried about sexual harassment suits, but they couldn't care less about when kids uh, bully other kids or uh, slander other kids. And I think they should be uh, cracking down on that stuff, but they don't. But that not, I don't care if they don't. Uh, that that does not justify uh, somebody coming in and killing someone. No, I agree. I agree with that point 100%. I just wanted to know your stance on the slandering bully thing because I think they give certain people a pass and other people not a pass. Well, they shouldn't on. be giving people who kill people a pass. No, I agree. Under I, I any totally circumstances. Agree. Totally agree. So, yeah, don't get me wrong on that point. I agree with it. You know, murder is never the answer, but I'm talking about the prior fact of, you know, that they're making this kid out to be such a monster prior to the fact, but, you know, they wouldn't take care of the situation before it happened, you know? I understand all that, but, uh, you know, yeah, we don't, I don't know what kind of kid he was before uh, the, the, the murder, but uh, I, the murder is wrong. It's wrong, period. I don't care what, uh, you know, un unless somebody's coming at you with a gun. Or, or a hatchet, uh, or uh, they're coming at you with their pit bull. Um, you just don't have the right to kill other people. That's it. Uh, end of story. Don't care how old you are. Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Yes, hi. Um, I'm a little nervous right now. I just started listening to you um, within the last couple of weeks. I heard you maybe a year or two ago in a truck while I was at work, and uh, I thought you were very funny. Um, you don't know quite how to start, what my opinions are, but um, what I told the person who had first answered the phone was that most people always seem to kind of, let me put this just the right way, is to um, kind of always agree with everything that you have to say, which... Um, can you help me out say something? <laughs> I, I don't know what you called yeah. about, so I don't know how I can uh, help well, you. What I call was the, for, what kind I'd of say start by taking the bottle out of your mouth. The, huh? What did kind of trigger me to want to call you has to do with that film crew situation that you said that I'm kind of was really derogatory towards someone having to make a living and it, it, don't do it around my area, kind of like, you know, you were going to disrupt it or whatever. Which, right. Um, yeah. Point is, is like people out there have to make a living. And also, kind of they don't have to make a living at my front door. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah, I mean, because I live on a little. Day, maybe it's for a couple. Maybe a I, day out of it isn't tenure. a day. It is nine straight days. Oh, all right. Well, that I understand. Uh, the other point was too, which kind of again, I'm really. Like I say, I'm drunk? almost having a hard time breathing because I'm... Because you're drunk? Never, no, I've never been on... Because I've never talked to on the air like this. I'm not even listening to it, and I probably sound ridiculous. Well, if, you're not, <laughs> if you're not listening, how are you able to call in? No, and right now, you, you turn the radio off. Yeah, but you're listening to the show. This is the show right oh, yeah, now. Yeah, well, the other thing you had to do is... It's just like... Maybe you're smoking weed. What, what, what is the issue over there? Over at my place right now? Smoking weed, drinking. What are we drinking no, today? I don't drink. Yeah, I drank some beer today. Yeah, um, how much beer? But I, I do work in the film, and it, the thing also had to do with your um, comments. They had to do with the amount of money that you made yeah. in the stock market. Right. And that, which you got a problem with that? that well, there's no problem. With the thought that I had when I was listening was um, that, again, the, the, the percentage of the people in our country can't invest in the stock market. And Whose fault is that? Whose fault is it they sit home drinking beer and calling radio shows all afternoon long? Whose fault is that? All right, you have a good day. Uh, good you, too, you too, sweetie. <laughs> Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. To all those guys out there that are that are knocking these broads up and, and telling them that they love them and, and all of that. You know, these girls don't love you. These girls love the wallet. These girls don't want to have your baby. These girls want to have job security. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yeah, baby, it's the Tom Likas Show. I know for telephones, 1-800-5800-TOM. He's our telephone number. Eddie. All the Tom like your show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. First time caller. Cool. 
uh, before I get into what I was going to talk about, I just wanted to say, or I just wanted to ask you, do you know who gets the most out of your show of all your listeners? No. Entertainment value and, and all that is smart people. You know who gets the least out of your show and who? are probably the ones who call you the most? People who speak Chinese? No. Oh. Well, maybe. But uh, I was going to say dumb people. <laughs> people with low IQs that they call and they can't understand the logic that you're putting down. And they get aggravated because they can't understand it. So they get a call and try to you know, detract from what you're trying to put out there. I so especially like it, when dr I, I like it when drunks call in. And when I'm making fun of drunks, they don't know I'm talking about them. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. But anyway, I was calling about uh, the Lakers. I wanted to get your take on how, you know, it looks like, you know, ever since we landed Pau Gasol, it looks like every team in the NBA is trying to scramble and try to make their rosters better before the playoffs start. Well, they're all scrambling, but uh, it hasn't worked out as well for them as it has for uh, the Lakers. Uh, uh, certainly the Jason Kidd trade. Uh, Jason Kidd's a good player, but what they had to give up to get him. Uh, I don't know if the Mavericks are as good a team as they were before the trade, frankly. I mean, I, I honestly can't remember the last time I've seen this much trade activity in one season in the NBA. Well, certainly in one division. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's, definitely that. That's what's amazing about it. Yeah. And, and I mean, think about it. You could run the rest of the season without Andrew Bynum and do just fine. Yeah, he hasn't even come back now. That's the scary part. It is the scary part. I mean, how do you think they're going to do, do, going to do tonight? Well, I mean, why would you have any reason to believe they're not going to win again tonight? I mean, <laughs> what are they up nine in a row now? Uh, ten, actually. Ten in a row. Eleven will be tonight. Right. I mean, and and by the way, the NBA, the top and the bottom teams have always been like this, uh, where teams uh, go on a tear of winning thirteen in a row or losing thirteen in a row. Uh huh. Uh, that kind of thing, and. Uh, you know, what's stopping the Lakers right now? Plus, they're playing in a stretch of some of the worst teams in the league. Right. I mean, their schedule right now really is really like, look, they, boy, they played Miami last night. Come on. I know. That was, uh, that was a butt whooping for but sure. They're like the Miami was playing the part of the Washington Generals, and the Lakers were the Harlem Globetrotters. It was, it was <laughs> like that. Yeah, it was pretty one sided. Yes. Have you been to any games this season? You know, I haven't. We keep talking about doing it, but we really want to do it. Uh, the, you know, we're, we're big fans. I mean, we follow the uh, the trials and tribulations of the Lakers as much as any listener. We're, we're freaks, and we always have them on in the studio. And we watch every pre- and post-game show. We watch uh, James Worthy. We watch Bill McDonald. We watch all those shows. Like his fan appreciation night at Staples. Come on, Tom. I'm in. I'll tell you what. You get that John Black on the case, the PR guy for the Lakers. We're in. I'm. I'm ready to do it. Oh, I know we can get a bunch of your fans down there, and that'll um, be a good time. Um, uh, you, well, you, you know what? They don't need me to draw fans. The Lakers are the hottest thing, once again, are the hottest thing in Southern California, bar none. And they're hotter than any NBA team in any city because uh, we're the NBA city that doesn't have an NFL team. Right, right. Well, oh, us in Toronto, I guess. Team. Huh? <laughs> All, all the focus is on our basketball team. Uh, right, right. So the Lakers get that much more attention. Now let me ask you this. Can you possibly see in the near future uh, a possible Lakers-Celtics finals matchup? Well, yes, of course. I mean, the Lakers right now are the best team in the West, and the Celtics right now are the best team in the East. And uh, the Celtics have been the best team in the East uh, pretty much all season. We never got tested against them with our full roster, though, especially now that we have Paul, Paul so I don't no, know. There's no it's, doubt yeah, that matchup. that is the matchup everybody's hoping for. Uh, it really, the rest of it is all uh, just, uh, for most people, it's just uh, waiting for, for that to happen. But, right. you know, it's a law, as you know from the past, that's a long climb to the top of the NBA to get to the finals. Very true. And anything can go wrong. You hope it won't, but it can. I mean, we hope Pau Gasol won't get hurt. <laughs> we right. hope Andrew Bynum, when he comes back, will uh, be healthy and stay healthy. Right. We hope so. We'll see if that happens. i got to ask you one question before I go, Tom. Uh, do you have in your possession, in your home, a painting of yourself holding a glass of wine? No. I have a painting of Without myself. Or anything like that. I have a painting of myself in front of a microphone. Oh, okay, that that sounds more like you. Right, I, I, by the way, I, by the way, I I didn't commission it. I didn't oh. buy it. It was a gift. 
that just sounds like something that you would have, you know, just something, you know, to commemorate, you know, your achievements and all that. Pictures of me. That's right. That's what I have on the wall. My own pictures of myself. I just picture you. You know why? Because like a... at my home, I want to have pictures of all the people who love me the most. <laughs> and the walls are covered with pictures of the one and only person who really understands me. And that's me. I was good, Tom. Can you take me out, uh, Don't Taste Me Bro style? <laughs> no one's asked for that this week. Here you go. Are you ready? Thank you, sir. All right, Eddie. Here it comes. What did I do? Get off me. Nobody ever get off my face. Get the f off me, man. I didn't do anything. Don't taste me, bro. Don't taste me. Bro. Don't taste me. I didn't do anything. Like a fine wine, that gets better every time I hear it. It does. 1-800-5800-TOM. Let me introduce two callers who happen to be online at the same time. Melissa, I'd like you to meet Bob. Bob and Melissa. Hello. Hello. You guys don't know each other, do you? No. No. All right, both of you, I want, I'm going to count three, two, one. I want you to both ask your question. Ready? Three. Two, one, same time, go. Uh, I want some financial advice on what I should do with some liquid cash. How much? Yeah. I got a half mil. All right, Melissa. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at that. That's classic. I thought maybe you were married or something. Maybe you, were, you knew each other. No, honestly, Tom, I just almost completed my divorce, did that thing like what you said, paying my little bit of child support that I have to, and I sold the sold the real estate that we had acquired, and now I want to figure out what you think I should maybe do with it. And Melissa, is that your question also? Where did, yeah. you, where did you get a half a million dollars, Melissa? I just did. No, 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 you didn't. It, it, what, it fell from, from the sky? Where did it come from? No, my dad passed away and left it to me. Wow. Half a million dollars. Did you have any yeah. idea you were getting at half a million dollars? No, I had no idea. What's the most money you've ever had? Um, nothing. I'm a student. <laughs> oh, my. Wow. And uh, what are you? Have you figured out what your annual expenses are to go to school? Are you studying something worth? You're not studying poetry or? No, medicine. Or, medicine. Very good. Okay. Let's see. So you're studying for a real degree. How much are your annual expenses? Uh, tuition, books, uh, place to live? Well, yeah, I, I was planning on using some of it uh, for school just to get through that, but there's still a lot left, so... Well, uh, first of all, I, my recommendation to you is you want to be saddled with as little debt as possible. Yeah, I don't have any. I have zero debt. Right. I don't but, even have a credit card. All right, well, you want to keep that going, okay? okay? So in other words, if you need to borrow money, borrow it from that. Don't borrow mm -hmm. it from a bank. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, this is a time you have to be very cautious in the stock market. Right. And uh, so, Melissa and Bob are going to... And well, And, well, here's the thing about real estate. Uh, I said this to another caller on today's show, and I'll say it to both of you. There is a window of opportunity right now to buy real estate. And I never say this. I've been saying for years, don't buy it. I just bought a house myself, a second house, and now is a good time to do it for two reasons. One is, in the next few months, home prices are going to continue to take a hit. Have you been reading the statistics or seeing any of the graphs on home prices, especially here yeah. in Southern California, taking a big hit? Right. They're going to continue to drop for the next few months. You don't want to buy a house for short-term flipping or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you were ever going to buy a condominium or an apartment or a, the, uh, a house, uh, this is a good time for, for that reason. The fact that prices have dropped. The other is that the government has just raised the limit for a conforming loan. Do you know what a conforming loan is, guys? Oh, yeah. Melissa? I don't. No. All right. um, there's only a certain amount of money you can borrow and have your mortgage insured by the federal agencies, Freddie Mac, and, and uh, I'm, I'm spacing on the other one. But Freddie Mac is the. Uh, oh, Ginny May. Freddie Mac and Ginny May. These are the federal agencies, the quasi governmental agencies, that uh, they, they actually go out and get mortgage money and they insure the government that it'll be paid back. They okay. insure the bank that it'll be paid back, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, right now, you can only get a loan up to, well, uh, until recently, it was 400 and change, like 415 or $420,000, something like that. A little over four. A little over 400000 They have just raised that to $729,500, I believe it is. That's right. 
And that means you can get a much lower interest rate on, on amounts up to the $729,000 than it would be if you were over $729,000. Okay. So if you bought a place that cost half a million dollars, uh, you could get a 30-year fixed loan for much less than you would pay previously when it was a jumbo loan. Mm -hmm. This window of opportunity only exists, I believe, until the end of this year, December 31st. Then it goes back to the way it was. Okay. So if you're going to buy real estate sometime, and I'm not saying today is the day, but sometime between now and the end of the year, my opinion, and I'm not a real estate expert, I'm just a self-made multimillionaire. Right. <laughs> my opinion is that this next nine months, this will be the uh, optimum opportunity, I think, to buy real estate in Southern California. Okay. Right when blood is running in the streets. Yeah. Keep an eye on those uh, foreclosures. <laughs> there's lots of them, and there's going to be more. Okay. Well, you know what that said. Now, here's what I'm kind of toying with. You know, with a half mil, I can maybe leverage and go out and buy, say, maybe two, possibly three different fourplexes and kind of play with it in that perspective. You can do that, and as a matter of fact, because so many people have been foreclosed, uh, here in Southern California, rents are at a multi-year high right now. That's right, and they're going up. Yes, uh, that would not be a bad idea, but remember, you have to be prepared to be in the business of managing units, mm -hmm. managing apartments, and that means you got to learn where the Home Depot is, and you got to learn how to find the plumber on Christmas Eve, and you got to be prepared to be on call 24-7. There's a lot to that. Yeah. My recommendation to you is if you even consider doing something like that before you do, meet people who are doing it now. Okay. Get to know them. Okay. Ask them questions. Right. Make them talk to you. Yeah. So you're saying kind of stay away from the stocks right now? No, well, I never stay completely away from stocks, but don't put $500,000 in the stock market today because it could be $450,000 in a month. Oh, exactly. Okay. But, you know, put, what you do is called dollar cost averaging. And that means you take an amount that you know you can put in every month. You put the same amount in every month. Maybe it's $500 or $1,000 a month. Okay. So that as the market drops, you're getting more shares at a cheaper price. And when the market goes up, you get less shares at the more expensive price. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a time-tested theory that has worked very well for me and many other people. Really? Okay, that that's kind of your investment strategy that you. Oh doing. yes, I, I I do dollar cost averaging and have done it for years. Uh, you can look it up online if you Google the phrase dollar hyphen cost averaging. Uh, you will see it uh, many places, and you can read about where it comes from. But uh, highly recommend. Okay, great. Yeah, what you don't do, you don't take five hundred thousand dollars and put it in a mutual fund. <laughs> okay. You don't because if the market drops tomorrow. Yet you lose uh, on all of the shares you bought. Yeah. No. What, what I'm kind of thinking is if I can pick up a, a, at least one fourplex, live in one of the units there, um, basically live for free. It's that living with low debt or no debt. Let the building carry itself. Maybe go ahead and pick up another building and diversify a little bit. All right. Well, that sounds wonderful, but you've never gotten a call with somebody ask you to come over with a plunger at 3 a.m. <laughs> You're right. So make sure you learn. About, I know people who've done it. And they learn the hard way. Yeah. Okay. I'm not. Uh, d I'm not discouraging you. Uh, as I said, rents are at a multi-year high here in Southern California, so that could be a very good business. But you've got to figure it. Uh, got to do your due diligence. Got to find out how much it costs to have people on call to help you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're going to need to hire a plumber yeah. or an electrician, good, okay. or somebody to do minor repairs or major repairs. All right. So, uh, but you know, there's plenty of people who own those units. So go get to know some of them. Okay, great. Tom, I so much thank you for the input, and um, honestly, I wish I had listened to you 19 years ago. So do I. I would own the Maserati by now. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. So you don't believe that marriage could be happy? You don't believe that it could bring people happiness? I think there's people who uh, jump from an airplane and uh, they're happy, at least till they hit the <laughs> ground. <laughs> Feels like you're flying. Uh, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, Holly. 
one. It's the Tom Langer Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Louise, on the Tom Langer Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I really love your show. I just want to. Um, you pretty much talk about everything on your show, but I was wondering if uh, you know, or I don't know, if you have heard about little gay people or little lesbian people. No, I, I haven't. Uh, tell us what we've been missing. <laughs> well, I, I always listen to your show, but I don't know if there are any people that can... Well, right now, I, I don't know anybody, but I always wonder, are there any gay little people? Are you one of them? No, I have not. So you're just wondering if there are any uh, midgets or dwarfs who happen to be homosexual? That is right, and or lesbians. Or lesbians, little lesbians. So I, I was wondering if uh, anybody can call. Must be tough, know, if they want to Imagine if there was like an online dating site for people like that. I never heard of it, but I well, if adults or big people, uh, no, uh, I don't know. I, I was wondering if. Uh, that happens to, and little people. I don't know. Maybe somebody out there has been to a gay bar and has uh, seen uh, dwarfs walking around. And my wife will love to do something with. <laughs> well, that's oh, now we find out what your agenda is. <laughs> so, does your wife want a little uh, gay man or a little lesbian? Uh, no, <laughs> a normal. A normal, a normal a lesbian. Normal people. No. <laughs> I thought you said your wife wanted like to have a dwarf uh, who was also a lesbian. No, 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 no. Just a normal. Uh, that sounds like a party. <laughs> do we have any? Uh, do we have any dwarfs or midgets out there, or whatever they're calling them these days, uh, who happen to be uh, gay? I'd love to hear from you, because Luis seems to have an abnormal interest in this. <laughs> we could hook you up. Well, uh, what is it well, your wife wants, Luis? Well, just a little person. Uh, a little person, whether it's a male or a female? No, it's just a male. A male. Gay or straight? Straight. So your your wife would like to have a threesome with a midget? That's right. Wait, now, let me, now I have to ask. Now we've gone this far down the road. There's no backing up. Let me ask you this question. So you're sitting there with your wife one night. How did this topic come up? I have to know. Well, we have talked about, uh, okay, you, in your lifetime, you can only have one freebie or something like that. You know, with, I mean, what do you fantasize about? And, so, so she skipped over George Clooney and Colin Farrell and Enrique no, Iglesias no, no. and she went straight that. to the midgets. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's it. Yep. Pretty much. So, Luis. This is the woman you love. This is the woman you've been having sex with for how many years? Oh, about seven. Seven years. How shocked were you when she told you that her fantasy is about being with a midget? Uh, you know, I'm pretty much open mind. And, uh, but yeah, it kind of bothered me, but it's, uh, that's a fantasy. And uh, that's her. And... Now, would she prefer like a Latino midget or would she go with uh, any ethnicity? <laughs> uh, I, well, I got to ask her that. I'd love to know. Uh, we have not talked about uh, ethnicity. Because if you want a Latino midget, you can head right out to Santa Anita after any race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just take the uh, 210 to Arcadia and you're there. Okay. I would just stand around the stables for a while and, uh, you know, make an offer. <laughs> That's funny. You know it's uh, true. What? I said, you know, it's true. Well, what do I do? It, uh, that's uh, that's her fantasy. It's her. You thing. should bring your wife out on Dollar Hot Dog Day to Santa I Anita. I want to do a midget. You should take your wife to Santa Anita on Dollar Hot Dog Day. Whenever, that, whenever they replace that track over there at Santa Anita, you bring her over there and let her have a pick of all the jockeys. <laughs> They're off. Oh God! <laughs> now I'm getting or your wife's case, here. they're on. <laughs> well, I was just wondering if uh, anybody knows any um, 
Uh, no, but my question was about the... <laughs> Your wife wants to be with a midget. Well, that's a different topic. No, that's the topic. You brought it up. I couldn't have made that up. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, maybe we can hook this up. Are there any are there any midgets out there who would like to get? What's your wife's name, Louise? Uh, I can just that. just her first name. We don't need her last name. Well, uh, it's uh, Rosie. Rosie. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we don't know. We don't know whether Rosie has a preference for ethnicity, but. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, but, you know, uh, being in Southern California, I'm sure if if there are midgets out there, I, about forty percent of them probably are Latino, like every uh, everybody else is forty percent Latino here in Southern California. So uh, maybe if they spoke Spanish, would that help at all, Louise? I definitely will. Okay, good. Is the wife hot? Is your wife hot, Louise? Yes, she is. Really? Yeah, she's now, a little way, but it's okay. Uh, not that. The other way, but... all midget. <laughs> would, you, would you like to watch her with the midget? Well, I would have to probably have to be there. <laughs> well, you wouldn't have to be. Uh, I'm just curious about this because, you know, usually it's women that we call spinners. I've, I've never, ever uh, heard of a, a, a man who's a spinner. Um, no, well, what I will just do is just watch, I <laughs> You'd like to watch your wife with a midget? No, I will not watch, but I'm just going to uh, commit to that, basically. You're going to do what? I'm going to have to commit to that. Because You're going to commit to it? Yes. But, but, well, but, so you're going to tell her that if you want to be with a midget, honey, I'm in the room with you. <laughs> and she'll well, have to accept I, that. You I was just asking that simple question. I know. <laughs> and I'm trying to be helpful. I mean, I could probably hook that up. If there are any midgets out there, I'm sure they listen to this show. Okay. No doubt about it. Uh, hi. You know, I mean, you hear about all these families that have 2.3 kids. If there are any point threes out there, we need to hear from you now. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> we will be happy to hook you up, Luis. All right. You and Rosie. Uh, again, we, I, I, you know, we've had connections out at Santa Anita. We've done appearances out there. I'll bet we could get you right down there into the stable. With that. <laughs> All right. I appreciate that thing. Those guys make good money. All right, Louise, hang on. We're gonna get we're gonna get your phone number because we are gonna hook you up as soon as a midget calls in. Okay. We are going to set you up. You and your All wife right. Rosie, you're gonna be set up. And if we have a midget out there who speaks Spanish, that's gonna be fantastic. And uh, are you going to be uh, videoing this or anything? You're gonna, uh, you might as well g get your camera ready for this. I mean, you'll want to uh, remember this forever. Well, uh, no, I don't. I don't want to get in trouble later with. I'm, uh, I'm sure. Life, you know. I'm sure your mother and your grandmother would love to see your wife out yeah. there <laughs> with a with a midget. Oh, definitely. I are you guys swingers by any chance? Do you? Uh... Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> well, well, well. I love this. Hi, right, Louise. Hang on. Uh, Dean is going to take your phone number, and if any midgets call in, we're going to hook you guys up. <laughs> oh, this is the best job in the world. The best. Our email address is my name. <laughs> I'm afraid to give it out, but it's Tom at. BlowMeUpTom.com The Tom Likas Show.